So what's up everybody? My name is Lance LaRock, AKA Lancer. Um, I'm from San Diego, California. I represent the Calamities, California. Uh, those are my two main crews, West Coast, dancing since uh, December 2001. Out here, freestyle session, having a good time. So when I started dancing, um, San Diego um, was kind of like, I wouldn't call it dead, but it wasn't, it didn't grow to be the scene that it is now. Um, Historically with San Diego, it was always golden in terms of the history that we had, right? Because we had Freestyle Session, we had B-Boy Summit. We had a lot of folks like the, the West Coast Rocksteady chapter when Rocksteady would come over. Um, so we, we have a lot of deep, strong history all the way from the 80s. Um, you know, with Spectre Crew being a crew, Dark Side and all that. Shout outs to them. Um, foot Soldiers, I could keep going. Um, anyway, um, but with San Diego, when I started dancing, um, there wasn't much on it, you know, like when I grew up, I was a skater. Uh, I grew up skating. I was listening to gangster rap and rock. Um, hip hop was just kind of like a, as a genre, it was just like a form of music to me. Um, it wasn't a culture that I really understood, um, you know, pre 2001. But um, the scene really started when I came up was uh, through the high schools, man. Like the middle schools and the high schools. We really built the scene in terms of my generation, battling each other, calling each other out going to each other's high schools and like battling, you know, after class and then, you know, running when the bell rings kind of thing because we weren't allowed to actually be there. Um, and then it just really grew from that, you know, like uh, I was from Southeast San Diego, um, but I went to school in Chula Vista or down there, down south, and there was cats in the north. Um, there was a lot of rivalries in San Diego and, and I just really appreciated that like homegrown feeling of really representing where you come from, but also like knowing when to turn on that switch to battle but the cool thing about SD2 is like even back then we knew how to turn it off like we knew how to turn off the beef or like the, the heat if you will so I, I was really happy growing up and just to be part of like the lineage of, of San Diego's history. San Diego going back um, we were known for Cypher City right like we, we were known as a Cypher City we loved to cypher the cool thing with SD2 is like we were always mixed in, in how we deliver our style. So you had like really blow up y technical people, but you had the really fundamental footwork people. Then you had like the dancey folks. Then you had like the all around cats. Like, but the, the thing is, we were all equals in the cypher. So with San Diego being Cypher City, I think that I grew up seeing so much variety and so much expression. So many crews that really like um, came out from that same place. Now, growing it out into like, San Diego's jams, we always liked to dance and, and the competition was always there, it was always heated. Um, but we always knew how to keep it like cultural, you know, like how to keep it funky, how to keep it like, um, you know, within the scene and, and all love. I would say now in today's competitive scene, cause I, you know, after San Diego, I went to the Bay. I've seen the scene in the Bay, traveled to New York, West Coast, East Coast, everywhere. Um, seen the whole growth of UDEF and the pro breaking tour. Um, and before that, there was a lot of big battles. Freestyle Session was always around as well, um, even to this day, as, since we're here. I would say that the competition scene now has been very much focused on gearing your style and your um, material towards you know, winning these rounds, right? Winning these battles. Uh, I think back then, battles, I mean, it, it's still pretty much relevant to this day, but you know, smoking and burning cats was like a little bit different back then, right? The long like the length of your rounds was a lot shorter back then, but you would burn people a lot more, like the battles were a lot more aggressive, a lot more personal, I would say, or like very like, it was a communication thing, right? And as we move more towards like a professional, a professional like competitive nature with things getting, you know, heavily sponsored, um, now with organizations and, and you know, dance federations uh, being involved, you know, there's a sense of like, competition that uh i don't know how to say it like the, you remove certain elements of what makes it raw but at the same time like i feel like that's kind of welcome you know like if we want to compete and we want people to uh live off dancing besides being like background dancers for artists or whatnot like if you really want dancers to live as they are right like and be competitive or just be like their own kind of brand uh you kind of want these big competitions so I think, I, I think we saw that change drastically um, through the pro breaking tour and through Silverback and UDEF and all that, where they were trying to formalize and make it like a pro circuit, right? Where people could make it like a tangible, tangible thing
to tell folks, hey, this is a circuit, this is where I want to battle. You know, can you sponsor me or like, can we, you know, make something happen where you could have competitors go out and, you know, win some money or get sponsored. Um, so I think it's moving in a direction where um, it's becoming more and more of a reality. I mean, you see it with the Red Bull BC1 All-Stars and Team Monster and all that. And I hope to see more like, I hope to see more companies or like more folks um, with money, seriously, to uh, invest in the scene. Uh, because, you know, as dancers, I think you, we do deserve to make a living off of this. Yeah, the Olympics is a big deal. Um, you know, me being biased and me being like, I have this love for, you know, the rawness of, of the culture and, and being stylistically free and, and having the freedom to dance and, and show what your style is. Sometimes that doesn't translate on a stage or it doesn't translate to certain judges. Um, there's a standardized process of how you're gonna judge at the Olympics and a lot of these bigger competitions moving forward. And as a dancer, like, some folks feel removed from that, right? They feel a little bit, um, it feels empty when you compete. And I think that was affecting me a little bit where I, I didn't really enjoy the competitions a lot because it felt like a chore, right? So I had to take a step back and just start dancing to enjoy things, um, which I always have, but like I had to just remove myself from the, the battles a little bit. Um, and it felt good. I mean, COVID happened too, so, you know. Um, but do I really feel like the Olympics should be where it's at? I'm, yeah, I, I, I do, you know, like, again, why not have somebody from some country represent the country and be a hero, you know, like, hero heroine from the country, like, like, if that's their opportunity to go out and show what they are and use breaking as a vehicle, I'm all for it, you know, like, even if I think their style is whack, or like, if, if I think, like, whatever is corny or like whatever happens, I feel like it's just an avenue, it's a medium and it's a big medium, it's a mainstream medium, but the, the culture and the rawness will always be there um, because it is an art form and art forms will always be timeless, will always thrive. There'll always be people that will push what they like um, in the scene and the people that really want that competition and really want to be out there and become these like athletic artists, go for it too, you know, like I think all is welcome. I think that just comes from my bringing up um, or my upbringing in San Diego, you know, like I just welcome everything. Um, but if I bow you, I'm just going to, you know, show you what I care about and show you what I love and may you do the same, you know, it's, it's just we're all equals in the, in the battle. So I will always feel like breaking is an art form no matter what. Um, and this is coming from someone like I, I used to really tr like train, train, like cross train and do like other physical things. Um, uh, I used to be very physical and very athletic in my style, but I still believe it's an art form. I just, I use the physicality as a way to like not make it an excuse, right? Like if I lost because I was tired, that's my fault. That's something I can control, right? So then I, I train that physicality part so hard that now I could just focus on the art. I want to be creative. I want to show what my style is. I want to tell my story, right? And I really feel like that's what breaking is. Like you can't just be the most athletic, the most skillful and think that you're going to win. I just. I, I, I'm really against that notion. I, I think it will always be an art form. Um, you could call yourself an athlete because, but deep down we are, um, we're artists, you know? It just takes a lot more physicality and, and mental strength too to really push, uh, push us where we go. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the uh, artist side. Um, do I welcome more athleticism and all this? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's competition, you know, things evolve, you know? <laughs> there are cats doing like minute long rounds and I'm like, all right, good job. <laughs> Makes me look tired watching it, but it's okay. If we want to be the artists that we say that we want to be, then we got to promote more of the things that we love, right? Instead of tearing down the things we hate. So like, if we are about the culture, we should throw more gems that are, you know, really showcasing the parts that you love about culture. Um, and if we feel like, you know, we want to support the cats that want to dance for a living and be competitive, then we should do that too, you know? I think the one thing that I feel like we're lacking, and I think that it, it will grow more, is um, I guess the ecosystem, right? Like cats like you, you two, like um, filming and documenting this stuff. And like, yeah, I know we have like the big channels that are documenting um, the dance a lot more in recent times. Like we need that, we need professionals in different spaces, especially like money and accounting, so we don't get screwed over. Um, a lot of legal things as well. And then we need to, uh, there's a lot of youth programs coming out because I think that's the direction that needs to go to for the future, you know, like the, the youth needs to be nurtured and, and a lot of the veterans in the game, uh, whether it's like through training camps or schools like, or, or just like training someone in the garage like I do, you got to start like nurturing the youth and, and kind of teaching them 
not to do the, uh, not to fall for the same mistakes that the the other cats did when it comes to money and competitions and uh, also skill. You know, like we just gotta elevate. It really starts in the youth. It, it you know, hip hop is a youth culture. It will always be that way. And if we seek to become like you know professionals or you know the big money industries that we want to be, then we really gotta start training the youth to be better. Um, better aware of their situations um, as an artist, as an athlete, or as a business person, I don't know, you know. So I, I pray that we, we are moving in the right direction and I'll do what I can to make it so. So just want to say peace out and you know, shout out to everyone that really is passionate about this dance breaking and, and hip hop culture and just dance in general, movement. Um, you know, may you, may you find um, a level of expression that you know makes you happy and makes you feel alive and if you do then I'll support you. <laughs> so peace out. Lancer, Calamities, California. <laughs>